All righty, what's up? We are back. Today we are reacting to Dr. Shiva. He kind of came across my TikTok page and he was spitting some facts, you know? So I thought, okay, I want to deliver some value to you guys. So I think this would be a very good person uh, to get that job done. Originally, I, I wanted to react to somebody else, but I think this guy blow your minds a little bit. You know, something I was thinking about was, could you imagine... I would hope most people would want to be themselves, but I feel like it's very easy to want to do things for views. You know what I mean? I just hope that uh, I never get to the point where I start to degrade who I am just to get more views on YouTube. If anything, I would want to, because you know what I mean? I see a lot of people make YouTube videos or TikToks or whatever, but the way they do it, like they might have a video that pops off, but the way they do it is very repeatable by anybody like i wouldn't want to have that kind of reputation i would hope that me being who i am gets me to that level not doing some weird prank not being just freaking degenerate to society not being weird you know that was off topic today this video is more about the truth i never wanted to be a part of any one political spectrum i never wanted to be on any one side and this video kind of proves that I I had at least a couple brain cells thinking, right? Because this video makes me think that maybe I'm on the right path. Because I don't, the thing I don't like about politics is that when you are on one side of the political spectrum, even if your your side does something that you don't agree with, you kind of disregard it and it kind of have like a like a sports team mentality of it. Whereas, oh, my team had a really shitty season. You know, the management was bad, the coaches were bad, the players were bad, but it's my team, so I have to keep rooting for them. But I feel like that's not how it should be in politics. It should be who's doing right, who's doing wrong. You shouldn't have to be on the same side every single time. You should be able to, hey, the left did this right. Hey, the right did that right. But it's always, oh, the left did it, so it can't be right, or the right did it, so it can't be right. So I don't, I never like that kind of energy. You should be looking out for your, your own best interest and the best interest of your community, not your political party. But anyways, Dr. Shiva, great guy. He's running for president. Let's get into it. A very small set of people control 8 billion people. This is what I call the elite. Let's say there's about 10,000 of them. How is it these people are able to manipulate the 8 billion people here? If you talk to a lot of naive people, they think, oh, it's the Rothschilds over here or it's the aliens. They don't understand it's not... He's going to drop a whole lot of truth bombs. Just be prepared. What you think he's going to say is not what he's going to say. Any one individual, it's not any one organization. There's something called swarm intelligence. If you watch all those birds flying together, not any one of them is in control. They move together as a unit. They're closely knit. They're quote unquote telepathic, but they move with a singular goal. The goal of the elites here is power, profit, and control. This is the goal. So if we look at it from a control system, what are the inputs they're sending into this system to achieve their goals? And what is the output that they seek? People getting fat, meaning unhealthy. Are people getting dumb? Pay close attention because he's going to list out some things that, that you're going to be like, oh, whoa, these things are happening right now. Which means ignorant. Are people happy? Which means are they being entertained? Are people divided? Are they isolated, disconnected? They don't want people here connecting with each other. Are people feeling helpless? Are people looking to the elite to save them? And they like that. They like when people here are looking to them, the enemy here, for their saviors. They're Does that sound familiar? In the last couple of years since the you-know-what disease came out, does that sound like, you know, plausible? Is this guy opening your eyes a little bit? Because I remember even this early on, on the video, the first time I saw some of this, I was blown away. Now, how do they do this? You're going to realize it's not any one group. It's an interconnected, tightly knit group. They're all closely interconnected. In fact, they all go to the same restaurants. They have all their kids going to the same equestrian shows. They all shop at the same place. They all go to the same parties. You're not part of that. So who are these people? And what are the institutions of power that they have? Well, something too that... In a weird way, you almost can't blame them because if that was you, if it was you, your group of friends running the world, are you telling me you wouldn't be doing things to, to benefit your friends? You wouldn't be plotting against the uh, you know, people below you? I'm not saying they're in the right to do it. Like, What is the solution to, to this? I think he's going to get into it. 
what I'm thinking right now in my head is um, if you have a group of elites and then you get rid of them, you leave this, this vacuum of space, I think it's called the vacuum of power or something like that, where you kind of uh, have these open seats available to someone else. So kind of like what happened to the cartels in Mexico, you take out one cartel, another cartel is going to fill in their spot. And that's something that I've always thought about with, when it comes to the elites. Is if you take one out, another one is going to come back, right? First of all, they have academia, Harvard, Oxford, Yale, MIT, IIT in India, the top 100 university presidents. These people are on boards of companies, but it's about 100 people who run the major universities in the world. It's like the Clinton Global Initiative, WEF, World Economic Forum, Center for Foreign Relations. And there's many other institutions like these, but it's the CEOs of these institutions. And these guys know each other. They definitely work together. The next thing you have is you have government, U.S. senators, prime ministers of countries, advisors to governments, includes CIA, right? Intelligence organizations. And again, all these people know each other. They're interconnected. They're a swarm. They're tightly knit. They're not divided like these people over here. They're not dis connected they're highly interconnected so these people are focused on power but then you also have a whole nother people the ceos of the global 2000 companies other big organizations like big pharma companies pfizer big agriculture companies like syngenta big investment companies jp morgan you put deutsche bank here you put epstein down here okay he was involved in all this you also have the fed the central banks all these people party together when i say party together i mean literally they party together guys absolute close close-knit friends. And in fact, the CEO of a global 2000 company will easily move to one of the investment companies down here. If you look at Target, big companies like Anheuser-Busch and Exxon, you'll find that one... You know, we talk about conspiracy theories, but this is it. He's, uh, he's connecting all the dots and it doesn't get any more conspiracy theory than this, I think. Everyone's interconnected. Everyone is planning things behind the scenes. These big companies are, are never going to admit it, and they don't have a reason to. There will never be a, a power greater than them to make them pay for their sins. They were in one of these investment companies, and these investment companies sit on the board of these companies, and they shuffle back and forth. So this is all about making money, right? These people are about making the dollar. These people are all about power, this is profit. And then fundamentally, you have control, Hollywood over here. This includes celebrities. You have their agents, Hollywood agents, like Ari Emanuel, as I've talked about, who's a guy who controls most of Hollywood. He controls World Wide Wrestling Federation, the MMA, etc. The media companies. This includes Disney, Viacom. This includes now Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. These are large media companies. Google, you can put in there also. You also have big news stations, CNN, Fox. And combined with this, now we have another group, social media influencers. This is like Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, these characters who have come in, but they do not exist without support from these guys. If you notice, overnight, a bunch of social media influencers have come out of nowhere. And these people are created by these people. So when you look at... Have you ever heard stories of selling your soul to the devil and becoming rich and famous. This is that all these big companies, all these big, you know, corporations, just uh, celebrities, they all know the right people, right? Everyone knows the same people. So imagine that. So you're you're a girl trying to make it in Hollywood and you're like, "Okay, I'll do anything for for that five, five 15 minutes of fame." All it takes is just knowing the guy that knows the guy like, "Hey, I can make it happen." But you got to do XYZ. It's the same, this is a different side of the same coin. They all know each other, everyone. And in order to manipulate these people, they need front men to manipulate these people with policies. Because what comes out are policies. These are the inputs they put into the system, propaganda. They feed these people purposely, people who they tell them are gonna save them, like the Elon Musks or Trump or the Kennedys. Now, who are the people part of the swarm that does that? They have the obvious establishment. And these people are like the Clintons or the McConnells or the Obamas or the Bushes or the Queen of England. Typically people say, oh yeah, those guys are part of the establishment. But one of the things we teach at Truth, Freedom, Health, the most insidious people are what I call the not so obvious establishment. 
these are the people that are created to make sure that the 8 billion people look to the elites to save them. Trump, he's got a golden toilet, Mar-a-Lago, Kennedy's, completely bogus family. You can look at historically people like Gandhi or people like MLK. These people all came and were endorsed by the swarm. These people do not exist. They live in Malibu. They live in the places of the elites. And these people are the ones that are you. Notice how they aren't all from the same side of the political spectrum. And remember, their goal is to make sure people are in the state of division, disconnection, and helplessness, particularly. They're observing all this. They have their sensors. And one of the features that they notice is that as long as people are in dysfunction and diseased mentally, physically, emotionally, they're happy. Well, what are those diseases these days? We see obesity. We see endocrine disruption, men with low testosterone, and people questioning their sexuality. We with everything going on with the letter people, does it, does this, is, are things starting to connect? Do I have to say it out loud or can your brain put two and two together? This, this is life expectancy. In fact, when they see dysfunction, you know what they do? They put another input in, which is normalize the dysfunction. Eat sugars and high fructose food. Well, over here, people have been literally getting fat. They're actually making more money because the obesity now creates obesity drugs. The endocrine disruptors, let's talk about this. This will really explain what's going on with Bud Light. About 20 years ago, there was research done at the universities that clearly showed the use of restricted use pesticides like atrazine and other chemicals in the atmosphere actually cause endocrine disruptors which could reduce male testosterone, which could also affect mammals where the sex organs can change. You're seeing a phenomenon where more and more people are questioning their sexuality. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that the general public doesn't understand this because if they did, they would awaken to something that's going on from the decisions you made. So you call up your friend, Bud Light, he goes, hey, look, let's run a campaign. Let's normalize trans. Let's exploit a willing person to be exploited like this Dylan Mulvaney. Let's put them on as a poster boy for Bud Light and let's push them out there because we want the attention to normalize a dysfunction because the goal is to make sure they don't lose their trillions over in Syngenta. They're willing to take a billion dollar hit over here, but they want to save their trillions in Big Pharma and Big Act because they're all... Think about that. Like we think Bud Light, they messed up big time. They're going to pay big time, but they're fine. Friends are going to bail them out. They got money hidden somewhere else probably. They got all the connections they need to survive for a very long time, but that's not what they want you to believe part of the same family. They all do favors for each other. What's happening over here, you have people who are pro-fat and people who are anti-fat people. You have people pro-woke and anti-woke. And they don't care. So you have a bunch of these idiots writing books against woke companies and anti-woke companies. You have people creating apps. Only shop at anti-woke companies. Don't go to woke companies. But you guys understand that these... Think about that for a second. They're making you divided into two camps and they don't care which side you're on. Because either way, they're making money. Let that sink in. They don't care who you go for because they're winning either way. So while you're at home writing all these long posts on social media talking about why you're right and they're wrong, I mean, you're still wrong because they're the ones winning the financial battle that's going on in the background that you're not even paying attention to guys don't give a damn. They're making money anyway. The investment bankers are going to make money from woke companies and anti-woke companies. But what's occurring here is people are being divided. So as long as these people work together as a swarm to control the policies and the propaganda and they provide false heroes and they're using the Trumps and Kennedys and Yadis, all of them who talk a big game, their goal is to make sure that you never understand this, that you keep thinking, oh, Kennedy's going to solve the problem. Trump is going to solve the problem. They don't want you to be leaders in your own community. I remember I saw this thing that talked about, you know, the emperor of old civilizations when they would be going through it as far as like they messed up and the people were mad. They threw more carnivals. They threw more gladiator fights. They did anything to distract the crowd from what was really going on. We think we're not sheeple, but we're, we're being corralled just like sheeple. And this is the history of human oppression. They have it down to a system, a goal, they have a controller, they have specific inputs, and they manipulate billions of people to achieve this state. They produce dysfunction. They don't give a damn if you die. The life expectancy in the United States, your children are going to die sooner than you because they want you to keep looking to the elites like Trump and Kennedy and all these people to save you. They want you to look to the swarm. They do not want you to ever support a Malcolm X or a Dr. Shiva or you. They don't want you to become leaders. And this is a goal. As long as you're divided, as long as you're looking over here, you're going to achieve their goal of power profit. You guys ever seen Plato's cave? When the, the guys that are furthest in the cave 
is usually represented as like poor people, right? And the people who are slightly above them, they cast a shadow on on the, the cave wall, and the people don't look at them; they look at the, the shadow they're casting. And this is essentially the same thing. People are projecting what they want us to believe. And the only way out of this is people here have got to understand the principles of system science. And the good news is you can learn this at Truth Freedom Health. So first of all, learn these principles at Truth Freedom Health. That's the only place. This is my gift to people. We've made it accessible to all your children. Any person who goes through the course, you can give it to your children. Anyone can learn this. But the goal is go to Truth Freedom Health and you will understand the science of systems. So we've created that weapon. And with this weapon, this is a hammer here, we have a way to smash this swarm. But without the understanding of this, without you understanding this system science, without you understanding the knowledge of systems, you will never break out of this. The nice thing for the elites is we live in a time and age where there's so much information out there that we have no idea what's right, what's wrong. Think about the media. Who owns the media, right? If anything, it's easier now. That there is so much information out there that they can just easily start spreading the wrong information and because these people have control of the media they can make that the narrative so they can make the truth sound like the crazy you know well you know what they say the truth is usually more more crazy than the fiction well there it is what do you guys think did you learn something new did your brain shift in the way that you weren't expecting today because that was the goal it's a lot to take in it really makes you think there's this, there's a part too that i thought was pretty funny where he would talk about like why are you donating to billionaires when they have billions of dollars and his argument was that the average american has 400 dollars in their bank account and then they're donating the little bit of money they have to billionaires and it's just really crazy to think about it. like like from a logical perspective like does that make any sense at all like why are people with so much money asking you to donate the little bit of money you have to them hey man that was reaction number four next video podcast i'm trying to get some of the homeboys maybe a couple homegirls get their perspective because you know we need to be inclusive all right guys until next time